someone fabulous in studio with me, and she's here to talk about breaking news about a new vegan cooking show. Jane Les Mitchell, I am so happy that you are here with me in studio. I am so happy to be here. Thank you for Woo! coming. Okay, so let's talk about your new show, New Day, New Chef on Amazon Prime. Now there are vegan cooking segments and episodes perhaps out there, but nothing like this full show. Tell me Nothing about it. like this. This is a breakthrough show shot on a sound stage. 70 people were involved, including the amazing Elizabeth Alfano, who whipped up some incredible, what did you make? I made a spicy Italian stuffed peppers. Yeah, that was really, and the little hats, the yes, little stuffed the peppers little, yes. had the little hats on them. So we had incredible guests. We had vegan NBA legend, John Sally, who was on. He was amazing. We had Christina Lee from Beverly Hills 90210, Katie Sarifi, one of the stars of Annabelle Comes Home. And what these people have in common is that they're plant-based, they're vegan, and they want to talk about it. They want to whip up dishes. So the reason we called it New Day, New Chef, is that it is a new day. People are opening up to plant-based options. We know that the Beyond Meat IPO, initial public offering, was the most successful IPO since the 2008 financial crisis. Right there, that opened people up to, wow, then you see all these plant-based alternatives uh, coming all over. In, mm -hmm. you know, fast food restaurants where you'd never think you'd get one. And they're Dunkin just- Donuts, yeah. Subway, left and right. Every oh fast God, food has to yeah. have a plant-based option now. Burger King. Yes. yes. With the Impossible And Whopper. so it's so incredible. The world is changing. People are starting to make the connection between climate change and animal agriculture. We know yes. it is a leading cause of climate change. Yes. It is the leading cause of habitat destruction. You yes. see the Amazon burning right now. It's, that makes it the leading cause of habitat destruction. Mm -hmm. That makes it the leading cause of wildlife extinction. We're facing mass extinction right now. We're in the sixth mm -hmm. mass extinction. So for all those reasons, additionally for health reasons, yes, and health. yes, those animals too, yes. we can switch to plant-based we, and show that it's not a sacrifice, you know, that it's an adventure, that there's pretty much half a dozen animals we eat, and yet there are thousands of fruits, vegetables, nuts, and grains. So I love that you say this, because when I went plant-based, I thought, oh my gosh, what am I going to eat? I'm going to be limited. And then I realized as soon as I did go plant-based that my world had opened up and that actually I had been limiting myself. I'd been eating the same ham and cheese sandwich that of course was making me ill. And I hadn't really, I don't really have more choices than the, the five or six meat items that you talk about. Exactly. Whereas with vegetables, I came to discover eggplant and sweet potato and asparagus and so many things that I wasn't eating. Before. Brussels sprouts. Yes, and, I love Brussels oh my sprouts. gosh, there's so many and we can put them together in combinations that seem just like our comfort food. So we had tacos, we had pizza. The pizza, we had the Beyond Meat Burger and the Impossible Burger in one ginormous tantalizing tower burger that was oh just gosh. unbelievable. You'll dream about it. Yeah. Mouthwatering food, all of which is zero cholesterol. So we know cholesterol leads to plaque, which yes. is a contributor to heart disease, which kills one out of every four people in this country. Every time you hear a fire engine, chances are it's not a fire, it's somebody having a heart attack or stroke. And so we can avoid all that too. Yes, that's right. And I, I love that you say that because there's something else about plant-based foods. Plant-based foods have fiber. Meat has no fiber. I almost fell on the floor when I learned this. It is impossible to have a healthy diet without fiber. It's just impossible. In fact, fiber pulls cholesterol from the body. So the fact that plants give you fiber and meat has nothing, it just tells you right there that it's what you need to put yeah, in your diet. Yeah, as I like to say, if you don't eat a chicken, the chicken walks away. If you don't eat fruits, vegetables, they start to rot. So that's nature's way of telling us, eat this, not that. I love that you say that. Well, okay, we're gonna about to head to break here, but I wanna quickly say, one of the things that I loved about watching New Day, New Chef, is that it's so much fun. Really, people are having a great time on set. It's infectious. Well, I just wanted to say, it's on Amazon Prime Video, New Day, New Chef. You just go to Amazon Prime. If you're a member, you can start watching it immediately. There's already six episodes up. Two more are coming up in a couple of days and we're doing a second season. Our incredible creator and EP, uh, Eamon McChrystal, who's an Emmy Award winning TV producer, uh, has created a great show. And then he came up with a contest because we're being inundated with people who want to be on this show, New Day, New Chef on Amazon Prime season two, which we're going to be shooting at the end of March. 
And so we decided, hey, if you want to be on, post it on your social media, ask your fans to vote for you. And then all you have to do is go to the New Day New Chef Instagram page, vote for your favorite vegan chef. This is a vegan cooking show. And uh, whoever gets the most positive comments will be uh, our people's choice chef on New Day New Chef. So I love that. So for everybody listening on WCGO, First, I would say go to New Day New Chef. Actually watch the show because it'll help to inform you so that you can then be a vegan chef on television. Of course, you have to naturally be a vegan chef. Can't just be anybody. Yes. You actually have to be a vegan chef. But then, you know, if you want to see yourself on Amazon Prime, go ahead to that contest on Instagram. and. Or if you have a favorite vegan chef, like let's say your vegan restaurant, there's a chef where you go every single day. You could vote for that person. We're doing chefs. We're not doing, like, I'm not a chef on the show because I can't, make coffee and toast without having a couple of Pyrex containers exploding behind <laughs> me. So I'm actually not cooking. I'm a vegan, but I'm not a vegan chef. I'm the host. Well, okay, one, one of the things you were talking about before break is also the energy that was on set. So, you know, you have kind of two types of cooking shows. You have one that's going to take you basically A to Z, every step of the recipe, or you have kind of the other extreme, which is that contest that happens where it's a competition. But this is something else altogether. Everyone's really goofing around on set, joking around. I mean, obviously you're learning the recipes and it's very informative, but it's really infectious joy. Well, what was really fun was that we knew we had to use a blender because with vegan cooking, blenders are ubiquitous. Everybody uses their blender to make cashew cream, to make all sorts of alternatives. Uh, uh, I'm probably the only one who didn't use a blender. Right, and so we said, well, do we get a silent blender? And then we go, no, let's, everybody has a blender at home. Let's just do a blender dance. So everybody started doing their blender dance and it's taken off. People are going crazy. Yes. People are texting me, I'm, I'm dancing now, the my blender blender's dance. on. Yeah. So uh, we are really having a great time on the show to show that vegan cooking is happy, joyous, and free. You know, it, it really, you're, one of the things that Dotsie Bausch, who is uh, an Olympian, a cyclist, and she is a machine, and she was on the show and she said, your gut biome, it sounds kind of, but it's really basically what's happening in your stomach affects your mood. It affects your serotonin level. Absolutely. And we're all very happy because <laughs> the vegetables and the fruits are good for, your, good for your gut and they're, that gives you happy serotonin. You know, so what you're saying is not a stretch. I knew that when I went plant-based, I was probably gonna drop a few pounds. I did, woohoo, that was great. But I didn't expect the boost in energy that I would get. And I'm already a high energy person, but I really? didn't grow up just a little bit. Uh, me too. Uh, but the I two did. of us would be like, I, uh, see, I don't, uh, and this is like drug-free right here. Yeah. It's just vegetables. Yes. I mean, so, and, and really it took my energy level much higher. Yes. And I think part of that is, I was certainly feeling better. My body was digesting easier, quicker, it was great. But also, I didn't expect that I would get this boost off of my shoulders. I hadn't realized what a burden it was to be doing something in my life that didn't align with my values. I'm an animal lover. I know what happens in factory farms. That was very difficult for me to come to terms with those two opposing value systems. And I hadn't realized that it was a huge weight. And when I lifted that weight and my actions aligned with my values and I no longer had to carry that, I got a double boost of energy. It's a great mood that you get from being plant-based because you know with every meal instead of hurting you're helping you're helping reverse climate change you're helping your own hearth health and you're helping the animals too so it's a win 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 no, triple, triple and, and it's there. really part of a philosophy life doesn't have to be a zero-sum game we don't have to kill to survive that's very old thinking and we have to transition to we have to evolve as yes. a species yes. because we're facing climate crisis and you know we have to change I have to say, it takes 30 seconds, I was watching this documentary about the czars, the last czar, and when he uh, was elevated, Nicholas, he had a choice. He could go modern and allow uh, people to have more of a say, or he could go old school saying, God's anointed me and I'm the absolute ruler. He said, God anointed me and I'm the absolute ruler, and there was a revolution, and you know what happened, it was a tragedy. And the, 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 the people who were commenting, the experts said, you know, if he had only had the big picture of where culture was going and he had made that different decision to embrace the people, give them power, listen to them and give them some rights and some ability to, to be, have a, have a say in what happened. He could end up have, he could have ended up creating a monarchy such as we have in England and in other parts of the world, but it ended because he didn't change with the times. And we all have to change with these times now. We're facing a climate crisis. 
If we continue decimating wildlife, we will literally have virtually almost no wildlife in a decade. Look what's happening in Australia. Look what's happening in the Amazon. And it's the destruction of forests that absorb carbon uh, to create cattle grazing land. It's just a huge, huge factor. So we can all do something immediately to begin reversing climate change right now, as opposed to waiting for governments and corporations to get their act together. We know how that works. It doesn't happen. Yes, I love that you say this. You know, sometimes we, we're in an election process right now and people think, well, they're going to wait four years to vote. But actually, you can vote with your dollars three times a day. The decisions you make on your plate are the biggest decisions you're ever going to make. And, yeah. and also, you know, we, we have embraced change in the past. You know, no one probably took a horse and buggy today. When's the last time you typed on a typewriter? I think you probably used something called a computer. When's the last time you sent something with a stamp in an envelope through the U.S. mail? I mean, even, even if you do have to do the U.S. mail, you do it, you know, FedEx or something. You do something similar like that. But most of us use something called the Internet. And so, remember, when the computers first came on and we had to know a little code to get on, we were like, oh, oh who's going to use this? This is never going to last. So, you know, trust <laughs> that this is um, just a wonderful win-win for everybody. And especially now that you can have anything. Oh, my gosh. Anything. Yes. Oh, you know, yeah. some of the vegan fish is so fishy because I was never a fish fan to begin yeah. with that I almost can't eat it. The Impossible Burger, it's so they've done tests. People think it's a burger. They go, I'd never eat a vegan burger. This is what I want. I want meat. And then people say, you know what? You're eating You're eating a plant-based burger right now. And they go, what? Yes. Because it tastes just like it because there's something called heme. And heme can be created. That's what gives meat plants. its meaty meatiness. And no it can meat. be created out of plants. I mean, we're all like... like around that. Yeah, we're all molecules, you know? And it's just a rearrangement of, of that. So we're all talking about burgers, but for those of us who have a sweet tooth, I'll say that So Delicious just came out with a salted caramel oat milk oh. ice cream. That is me. That is singing my song <laughs> right there. Okay, well, we talk about this massive change that we're under and just the fact that you have a television show on Amazon Prime that is an all-vegan television show, New Chef, New, New Day, New Chef. I think that also speaks to the changing times. But, you know, we talk about it as if, like, oh, you snapped your fingers and you had a television show. Of course, it's not that easy. Talk to me about some of the hurdles of getting this together. Well, uh, I've been on television for 40 years uh, in all over the country, Florida, Minneapolis, Philadelphia, New York, at WCBS-TV for eight years, at KCAL TV here in Los Angeles, then I went to a show called Celebrity Justice, then I ended up having my own show on CNN Headline News uh, and for uh, six years, and it was a good run, and during that time I said, would you mind if I did a little animal segment once a week? And they said, go for it. And we started doing uh, really animal rights segments. We started showing things like pig gestation crates where pigs yeah. who are smarter than dogs are kept in crates the size of their bodies, never able to turn around. And Very so, family oriented, very community oriented, very concerned about their children like all mammals are. Yes, yes. yes they're, they're, you know, these are all sentient beings with individual oh, personalities. Sure. We all know that our dogs have individual personalities. My little Rico, he stays under the covers till I, till I walk. <laughs> the other one follows me every morning and wants a treat. And the third one looks at me like, don't let the door hit you in the... So they all, they're, they're individuals and so are all these other animals. So anyway, that was incredible. After that show wrapped as, as a very good run and I left on wonderful terms. I'll always be grateful to CNN Headline News HLN for allowing me to do those weekly segments where we profile people like Josh Tetrick. Oh, was, he told me it was his first, show. You know, his first TV, really big TV interview and he, he was able to use that to, to gain access to some corporate offices, and you know, he said that that really helped him. But Josh anyway, Tetrick is the founder of Just Eggs. Exactly, is Just Eggs, Just Mayo. So I start after the show wrapped. I started going to uh, protests, animal rights protests, and I, I noticed something. It was freezing cold in New York. The protesters are shivering. Everybody's walking by quickly because it's freezing, and nobody's documenting it. I said, "Wow, okay, I can continue doing my animal segments, but I'm going to do it on social media." And so I started recording them. And then soon enough, Facebook Live came along and I realized, wow, there's so much happening. This movement's exploding all around the world. So uh, we have now 70 volunteer contributors who go live at Jane Unchained News Facebook page. Then we put it on janeunchained.com and then we distribute it with email blasts, etc. So we've got millions and millions of views since we started this about four years ago and we're just growing. So we've done a documentary, Countdown to Year Zero, which is a documentary about the impact of uh, animal agriculture on climate change. It's also available on Amazon Prime, free for Amazon Prime members. All our content is free for Amazon Prime members. And there it is. Check it out. Countdown to year zero. If you want to know, you know, let's say you're skeptical. Well, I don't know. Check this out because 
This lays it out how animal agriculture is literally destroying the planet and how we really do need to transition very quickly to plant-based mm -hmm. um, in order for our planet to survive. Mm -hmm. That's right, not a minute to lose. Yes. And again, we make those changes. You know, you might watch television and say, oh my gosh, I see people on all sides of the aisle and the whole system is crazy. But it's not that way, actually. It's very empowering to remember that you have the power. Your dollars, and that's what everyone is after, they are after your dollars. Your dollars make a difference. And when you align your purchasing power with your values, you will see the world change because you make those decisions. And it three feels, times a day. makes you feel powerful. Yes, Every decision you, are powerful. you make. Listen, when I go to a supermarket, I want to give a shout out to like Ralph's here. They have so many vegan I options now. Yeah. Incredible. Incredible. From, From floor to ceiling, vegan options. Floor to ceiling. It's amazing. Yes. And I just shopped there yesterday. I always I always uh, fix up the uh, vegan vegetarian <laughs> counter. I, re I range it and make sure there's nothing. I want it to look all nice and pretty. Because I know that I see people walking, if they see something, they're gonna try it, it's life changing. Yes, absolutely, very quickly, because we only have about a minute left. Pretty quickly, if you can do this, what are your predictions for the future? We are gonna hit the tipping point soon because mm -hmm. people are embracing this and huge change happens rapidly. Whether, whether you look at the moon landing that everybody originally thought was, wow, who, who was gonna be able to do that? And then we did it. So we have to set a grand intention in order to achieve it. And we, we do believe in a, a, a plant-based world, which means that people will, the restaurants will be primarily plant-based. Yes. And then the, 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 the animal products will be the outlier. And it's so good for us and really, just open your heart and mind, give it a shot. Yes, yes, and more and more companies are seeing the value of this as they realize that our resources on this planet, land and water, are very limited. So companies are going that way. Quickly on our way out, and I mean like two words, what is your favorite snack? Oh my gosh, a carrot with tahini sauce. That's crazy healthy. It's the Elizabeth Alvano Show on WCGO. Keep it locked, we'll be right back.